Hello, viewers. So, in honor of my top 10 most enjoyable Batman the Animated Series episodes that I'm about to go through, I decided to scour the internet and look through the comic databases to find the top 5 most awkward things ever said by Batman. So, without further ado, here they are, coming in at number 5. In college, I once screamed, I am vengeance, and then farted in an elevator full of innocent people. Number four. I put those stickers on the Batmobile because they make it go faster. Number three. I only punched him because he hit me first, Commissioner Gordon. Number two. Does anyone dare me to eat this whole pie by myself? And the number one most awkward thing ever uttered by Batman over the years? Alfred, get me my onesie. As much as I really enjoy the Christopher Nolan Batman movies and even the work done by the current voice of Batman, Jason O'Mara, my Batman will always be Kevin Conroy. And the Batman from the animated series will always be my favorite version of Batman. And here's why. One of the things that make Batman so intriguing to me always is that there are different iterations of him, different versions of that persona. For example, you have the Dark Knight, which is a fearsome, menacing character, the stuff of your nightmares. Then you have the detective, intelligent, witty, able to follow clues and foil even the most complex sort of evil plots. And finally, you have the caped crusader, someone who is very much into, you know, bringing justice to others, willing to do what it takes to make sure that everyone in Gotham can live as peacefully as possible. Now, all of these iterations of Batman can be really good source material for movies and animated shows and whatnot. In Batman the Animated Series, however, we got to see a really nice balance between all three of these types of Batman in the one character itself. And really, it was more about the villain that brought out which type of Batman was necessary for that moment. For example, Ra's al Ghul and the Riddler and the Mad Hatter would usually bring out the detective in Batman. Killer Croc, Poison Ivy, and Scarecrow would usually bring out the Dark Knight in Batman. And of course, the Joker, Clayface, and Two-Face would usually bring out the Caped Crusader. Every week that a new episode dropped, you were always curious about what the villain was going to do or who the villain was going to be and what type of Batman was going to be sort of used in order to thwart that villain for the week. It truly was quite a, an experience for me back, you know, being 12, 13 years old watching this. Now that brings me to my top 10 Batman the Animated Series episodes. And yes, this list could have easily been a top 20, but, you know, it's not really fun unless you have to say no to a couple of the episodes that you really love. And yes, I am not going to take the easy way out here. I'm going to do these in the order of how much I enjoy them the most. So from least enjoyable, if you will, allow me the somewhat ridiculous phrase because I love even number 10, to my most enjoyable one. Coming in at number 10 is the episode entitled The Lion and the Unicorn. Now in this episode, Red Claw has kidnapped Alfred. And the really interesting thing and the fun thing about this episode is you get to see a side of Alfred that you never really knew about. See, it turns out that Alfred used to be a British spy, and you get to see just how well he can sort of take care of himself. And it's a really fun episode, honestly, and really cool to see, again, just sort of a another side of Alfred that we we've never really got to see before. At number nine is the episode Baby Doll. Now, this one is a bit of a tearjerker right? Because it involves a young actor who has a, a, a disease that prevents her from sort of her bones from maturing, right? So 
she almost looks the same at 35 as she did when she was five. And because she was never able to sort of physically grow, it's it's sort of stunted her abilities to to continually evolve as an actor. And Batman has to do everything he can to sort of save her TV family, right? Because Baby Doll is, is holding her TV family, the old TV family hostage. And the ending is really emotional, but incredibly well done. Now at number eight is the Demon's Quest part one and two. Don't hold this against me that I'm putting together parts one and two as one episode. All right. I, it's hey, hey, hey. It's my review channel. I love this two-part episode because Ra's al Ghul in the Batman the Animated Series is really like a badass, honestly. He's really cool. And this episode is all about Ra's al Ghul testing Batman to see if he would, be, he would be a good heir to the sort of al Ghul, you know, estate kind of thing. And if there are all these tests for Batman that include aspects that bring out, again, that those three iterations, the Dark Knight, Cape Crusader, but a lot of the detective comes out here as well. At number seven, Beware the Grey Ghost. This episode is really fun. And of course, it, it stars Adam West, who was Batman himself, more the Cape Crusader and the detective than the Dark Knight. As a matter of fact, there's not really much menacing to Adam West's Batman, but it is fun, honestly. In this episode, he plays the role of a TV hero called the Grey Ghost. And Batman, of course, idolized the Grey Ghost. So Batman gets to work with the Grey Ghost on, an, a, uh, on a mission. And it's just, it just makes you smile to hear Kevin Conroy's Batman and then Adam West's Batman in the same room together. At number six is the episode Perchance to Dream. And wow, is this a powerful episode. It, it sort of poses the question, if you were offered the opportunity to live in a dreamlike state where everything that you ever wanted in life is yours, and I'm not talking about the like material items, right? But for Batman, it's things like having a having a, a love life, right? Having a, a soulmate, having his parents around. But he's not Batman. He can't be Batman in this world versus living the difficult reality of not being able to, to date, right? Be with someone. And of course, always living with the idea that his parents are gone. This episode poses the question of, if you had the choice, right, sort of like the Matrix and the pills, if you had the choice, which would you choose? And Batman comes pretty close to Dreamland. At number five, Robin's Reckoning, parts one and two. Again, a powerful episode because Robin essentially finds the man who killed his family or the man who's responsible for the death of his family. And Batman has to constantly sort of mentor him throughout these episodes to not go the route of pure revenge. Instead, keep in view the idea of justice. We need to bring this man to justice. And it's a great episode for sort of teaching us the difference between the two, right? Because revenge and justice are not the same thing. Now, at number four is the episode Almost Got Him. And I think this might actually be the most well-written episode of the entire series. Essentially, it's about all of our favorite Gotham villains, Joker, Penguin, Two-Face, Killer Croc, all playing poker together and telling a story about how they almost got Batman. One of the reasons why I like this episode so much is it has one of the funniest lines, I think, for the series, as they're all telling these sort of really super intricate stories for how they almost got Batman. They get to Killer Croc, and he's been sort of ignored the entire time. But when it's finally his turn to tell his story, all he essentially says is, I threw a rock at him. And they all just look at him like... And then he just kind of quietly says, It was a big rock. 
And I thought that was hysterical at 12. I still to this day say that line in awkward moments. You gotta imagine there's a lot of those in my life. Now, I'm not gonna give away what happens at the end of this episode, but it really is a well-constructed sort of surprise kind of ending here. So if you're looking for a great episode to watch with kind of a really interesting twist, go ahead and check out Almost Got Em. Coming in at number three is Feats of Clay Parts 1 and 2. This story revolves around an actor named Matt Hagen who uses a clay makeup product that he puts on his face. It absorbs into the skin and then he can mold his skin in any way that he wants. And this allows him to take on multiple roles as an actor and be quite successful. But of course, when you become obsessed with how you look, there's always behind that surface a psychological element that will never allow you to be comfortable in your own skin. And that's sort of what this episode pursues here, is how much that obsession can become a psychological one. And Batman does a wonderful job at sort of sympathetically trying to get Matt Hagen the help that he so needs. At number two, one of my favorite episodes, which I would imagine some of you might have a problem with here, it's probably too high. If it is, go ahead and let me know in the comments below, but I love the episode, The Man Who Killed Batman. Now, it's a really sort of strong title here, right? But it's essentially about a small-time gangster named Sid the Squid, who's really kind of a bumbly guy here, right? Doesn't do much. But in a fight with Batman, in which sort of just almost slapstick circumstances happen, that it looks like Sid the Squid beats up and kills Batman. So, of course, he instantly gets this sort of street cred that he's the man who killed Batman. But it's all a joke. It's all a farce. Of course, he didn't actually kill Batman. But watching this man sort of try to get this ridiculous street cred is honestly hysterical. And even the ending, I have to give them credit. I won't give it away, but I give them credit for sort of taking the taking the joke all the way to its sort of logical end here. But I love this episode. I think it's really fun and really interesting. And of course shows another side of Batman, you know, the detective aspect. Now, before we get to number one, I'm working really hard to get this channel up to where it should be. So please subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. Okay, what is my number one most favorite episode of Batman the Animated Series? Well, Heart of Ice with Mr. Freeze. When I first saw this episode as a 12-year-old boy, I was just dumbfounded by how how much it engrossed me and brought me into a villain that I didn't care about at all. I didn't care about Mr. Freeze. But to me, this is the most powerful origin story for a Batman villain and told so well that it absolutely kills me inside that no one has done a better job with this story in a live action Batman film. I mean, it is just screaming to be done well on the big screen. No. No. You stop it, Arnold. No. In this episode, of course, Mr. Freeze is a scientist working on a cure for his wife, Nora. And even just the way he says his wife's name is so pleading. Nora! Nora! The man who's been funding the research for Dr. Freeze essentially decides, I'm done. I don't want to put any more money into this. So not only does he kick Dr. Freeze out, essentially, but he destroys everything in the lab. And that leads to an accident that kind of, well, they sort of set it up so that Nora is is sort of in this weird place where she's neither alive nor dead. She's sort of Schrodinger's wife, I guess, if you will. But from the first second of the episode to the very last scene with Mr. Freeze just sort of 
sitting in the jail cell, you are you are just absolutely transported into this story, and it really makes you think about the connections between science, humanity, money, you know, how we treat each other. And it just, it's the type of episode where you see it once and it just stays with you forever. I absolutely implore you to watch this episode. If none of the other ones on my top 10 list, watch that episode and tell me that it doesn't move you. So those are my top 10 Batman the Animated Series episodes. Now those are just mine. If you have your own, go ahead and list them below in the comments section. I'll be really interested to see what you have to say. Thank you for listening. As always, subscribe to the channel if you're interested, and I'll see you next time.